I'm what? <laughs> um, hi guys. Um, quick introduction. My name is Steph Bui. Um, welcome to my kitchen in Somerville. Um, today, for the Boston Public Library Supper Club, um, I will be making Vietnamese egg rolls, or as we call them, Vietnamese jai yao. Um, so to start, I just want to give a quick introduction about myself. Um, I am the chef de cuisine at Chickadee Restaurant in the Seaport. Um, we opened about two years ago. It'll actually be our anniversary coming up in July, our two-year anniversary. Um, and that's it, I guess, for now. <laughs> um, so uh, to get started, I just want to give you a little bit of history about, um, or not a little history, but a little bit about why I'm doing this. Uh, I think one of the silver linings we can see out of all of this COVID and you know, social distancing and staying at home is that um, I really hope people are getting, are not only staying safe, but that they are having more time to spend with their families, um, that more people, it seems like more people are enjoying cooking, um, either as a hobby or something they do to kind of bond with their family. Um, it's important to me because I think that's why I love cooking so much. Uh, it has a lot to do with a lot of really good memories from when I was a kid and this is one of them. Uh, making jaya at our house was kind of a big family to do because we always made giant batches for not just dinner that night, but also gatherings, family gatherings with like lots of aunts and uncles and cousins. Um, we would make large batches, freeze them, have them ready to go for whenever. So it kind of took the whole Bui family to, um, to team up to get this all to work. Um, I'm probably going to get started with the just a quick intro to my family. I just want to give a quick shout out to them. Um, so my parents, my mom and dad, and my brother Nathan are in California in Santa Ana right now. So with everything going on, we, we miss them. We want to see them. Um, so this is a quick shout out to mom and dad. Uh, obviously this picture was taken sometime in the 70s. You can tell from the haircut and the short shorts. Um, this is a picture of the Bui sisters. Um, you've got Amy over here. Yours truly in the middle with the big front teeth and uh, my little sister Katie. Um, we also have a little brother Nathan or Nate Dog as we like to call him. Um, this is him, whoops, when he was a baby mom, dad, the whole Bui clan. Um, this is all of us at our local park where my dad insisted that we take pictures every year. So <laughs> thanks for taking pictures, dad. Otherwise I wouldn't have these to show. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of an homage to my family and what we used to oops, here you go, do together. Um, so I'm going to start off with just the ingredients. Um, you're gonna need a pound of ground pork. Um, all the, sorry, sorry, to start off, all these ingredients I got at my local Vietnamese supermarket, um, local meaning for me in Dorchester. Um, so for us Boston people, I like to go to um, Dorchester to this market. It's on Dorchester Ave. Um, and it's got a great, like, assortment of ingredients, really fresh fish. Um, my main reason for going there is the fresh produce, um, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. It's like super affordable, fresh produce every day. Um, and a lot of these herbs, these like specific herbs used a lot in Vietnamese cooking can't be found at other, um, stores, but in a pinch you can grab most of these ingredients also at Markets like H Mart, uh, C Mart, um, those are just the ones like kind of in Boston. Um, so let's get started. We're gonna go to the fridge. Um, we've got ground pork. Two medium carrots. You need half of a Spanish onion. I've also got some peeled and deveined shrimp. 
Um, I peeled and deveined these ahead of time. I saved the shells to put them in stock. I actually have that stock working behind me. Um, it's kind of a suit base for other stuff. Um, I just try to save as much as I can. It's not waste anything, but shrimp shells make great stock. Um, you're also going to need a little bit of cornstarch. Um, some eggs. Some fish sauce. I like to use this brand. It's the Three Crabs brand. Um, it's just, just one of the fish sauces my parents used all the time. Um, you'll hear a lot, especially more recently, about a fish sauce called Red Boat, um, but I prefer this one. Okay, oh, and two more ingredients I wanna talk about that go into the filling. Um, some mung bean noodles. So these are mung bean noodles. I've soaked them for about 20 minutes in warm water. Um, you just need to make sure you have about two ounces. Um, once it's been rehydrated, you're just gonna drain it, um, which I'll do over here. Make sure you drain everything really well if it's water because it's gonna affect how crunchy your um, jaya stay, your Vietnamese egg rolls. Um, so I'm just getting these drained now. I also have Wood ear mushrooms, they come dry. Um, sorry, let me show you the packaging for the mung bean noodles first. So, when you're at the Vietnamese supermarket, they look like this. Um, if you're not sure, you can't tell what it says just from the packaging or the type, just look at the ingredients. It should be like clearish, cellophane ish looking noodles um, made of mung beans, which are in the ingredients mung bean starch. Um, they've got like a kind of a not chewy texture but a bouncy texture um so when you rehydrate them don't feel concerned if they feel like under done or not ready to go they're gonna hydrate more and cook in the filling um and then i've got wood ear mushrooms that i also reconstituted um in warm water for about 20 minutes i just weighed everything down with the another plate to keep everything from floating um, and when they start off, they look like this. Um, they just seems like funny dried little, you find them in the dried spice and um, kind of, there's like a whole dried mushroom section at most Vietnamese supermarkets. Um, and when you rehydrate them, they look like this. So like kind of like funny little ears. Um, one quick story from when I was a kid, in Vietnamese they're called nam mèo, which means, uh, which, nam means mushroom, and I asked my dad this afternoon, like, because the word mèo in Vietnamese also means cat, and for some reason growing up I thought it meant like cat ear, which makes sense to me because it kind of looks like a funny cat ear, but he said that's not true. Um, so, what are mushrooms? Um, once they're reconstituted, look for a little section, um, there's like a little woody section that you'll want to cut out. Um, kind of where all the growth comes from in the center there. Um, so I'm just going to cut about an ounce of these mushrooms to start. Um, they're used really often in quite a lot of Vietnamese food, um, soups, dishes like bun cuong. Um, but they've also got kind of a like toothy, chewy texture to them, and they're kind of cool. Um, I'm just going to do a quick chop of these. Um, it's best to kind of treat them like you would herbs or like an herb like basil. Kind of like take the leaves or the separate little ears um, once you cut up the wooden part or the, sorry, the tough middle section. You can just kind of pile them up like this. Um, make a pile that, you know, is comfortable for your hands. Mine are a little small, so I'm not using a big old massive pile. Um, make thin cuts. And you can kind of, you can like hear the texture of the mushrooms when you're cutting it. They're got a little bit of bite to them. So once you 
shift them one way, shift nod them kind of one way. Just turn them over and go in the other direction to get kind of a medium to fine chop. Not doesn't have to be too crazy. Uh, the great thing about these egg rolls is, um, like I was saying before, you can kind of make a whole bunch ahead of time, which is why my mom and dad would make it like probably a five to six times amount of what I'm making for you guys today at the recipe that's posted. Um, and it makes, this recipe should make about 20 to 25 egg rolls, depending on how much you fill them. Um, but, Bobby, do you need the stairs? <laughs> Sorry. Bob's making margaritas on the side. Um, but this should make about 20 to 25 egg rolls. Um, and we used to make giant batches of it. They freeze super well. It's like as long as you've got them all rolled out raw, um, once they're, you put the filling in rolled out raw, um, you can just put them on a sheet tray or any flat surface, like a plastic container, freeze them individually. Um, and once they're frozen, you can package them into a very tight fitting container. I just used a Ziploc bag. Um, my parents usually wrap it in like, they'll wrap batches of 10 at a time in a couple layers of plastic wrap and then put it in a Ziploc bag to prevent any um, freezer burn. Uh, so, those are the mushrooms. Um, with the noodles, once they've been drained, you're going to take about two ounces of, sorry, the Start off with about two ounces of noodles, um, reconstitute them, drain them, and then you're just gonna cut these into pieces that will make it easier to work with when you roll them. So nothing crazy, probably chunks of about one inch in length. You can add that to your bowl. I'm going to start with the carrots. You need about two medium carrots. Um, and the important thing about your onions and carrots in this recipe, like I said before, with the mung bean noodles and the rehydrated winter mushrooms, is that you need to make sure there's not a lot of water in them at all. So what I'm going to do is peel them, grate them with a cheese grater. Um, at home, you can feel free to use a food processor. When my parents made large batches, we used um, a food processor. Same thing, you just want it in pretty small pieces. Um, I'm making a small batch, so I'm just going to use a grater so I don't have as much cleanup. Half a Spanish onion. Um, so we're going to process these vegetables, get them grated. I'm going to put them in um, probably some sort of kitchen towel or something just to get them drained, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, so, cheese grater, I'm going to use the coarse grain. Uh, watch your fingers, of course. Um, a lot of making these egg rolls, there's, there's, I, I also wanted to talk about making this because it's a really good project, like I said, for families to do. Um, for us kids, we were part of an assembly line my dad would set up. Um, my parents, my mom and dad would set up an assembly line of us. Like it was my little sister's job to do one thing. Her job was to peel the papers apart for us and set them down. <laughs> um, that was Katie's job. Um, me, Amy, and my mom used to fill the egg rolls um, after we made, after my parents had made the filling. Um, so those were good projects for kids to do, kind of help you roll these egg rolls. Um, And normally while my parents were making the filling, uh, we were in charge of getting the herbs ready. Um, I'll show you those in a minute too. Um, it was always our job to get the herbs washed, uh, spun, and dry. We always had to wash the herbs three times. Um, so once I started in kitchens, it was, it was 
kind of we were we were kind of used to prepping vegetables and produce, um, making sure everything's nice and clean and beautiful before we put them in our food, um, which I think helped me a ton in my career, especially in the beginning, just having being able to do those simple kitchen tasks. Um, and we started when we were really young. Obviously, grading vegetables isn't a good job for um, you know a child who's doesn't have a lot of training in kitchen safety yet, but something we graduated to eventually. Um, so once again, ends of vegetables, I'm just going to save for a stock for later. Got one more carrot to go and then I'll show you what it looks like to bring it up. Um, it's important to get all the excess liquid out. Um, it'll be especially important when you're making, um, so we'll be making two types of jaya today. Um, the traditional jaya are made with rice paper. Um, those are especially finicky when it comes to excess liquid. They tend to pop and burst when you're frying them if there's too much liquid. Um, the other ones that we're making with spring roll wrappers are a little more forgiving, but either way, we're going to be vigilant about making sure that the stuff is dry. Let's see if there's scraps. Scrap the bowl real quick. Um, so with this veg, I'm going to put it onto a... Oh, you need glasses? <laughs> Which ones do you want? Our margarita glasses. Um, so I'm just going to get these onto my clean kitchen towel. Um, and then I'm going to give them a really quick squeeze, just form a little bundle. And you can see there's already a lot of liquid on the bottom. And you'll see how much liquid comes out. Once you've got as much liquid as possible, you can go ahead and add that to your bowl. Um, looks like this. So we've got all our pre uh, veggies prepped. I'm just going to cut the shrimp next. Um, I've got 12 each of the peeled and deveined shrimp. Um, I'm going to cut them into thirds. That's just so that they're little bite-sized pieces um, so that when you eat the egg rolls, you'll have a couple bites with no shrimp, or a couple bites with a big chunk of shrimp. Um, and you kind of want to leave the chunks a little large because they can overcook. Um, so you're not going to split them in half the long way, you're just going to leave them in pretty fat chunks. Um, here's one. <laughs> you can eat a bobby chicken cocktail.
mushroom. You ready for a drink? Yes, <laughs> please. Um, and then I'm going to add my one pound of pork. This is two pounds. I'm just going to add a pound. Um, I usually always have a little ground pork around. Like I said, I was making a stock over there. Um, my parents always had ground pork, pork bones, chicken bones um, around to make quick soups. Um, it's kind of a big thing in my family, but we're going to add a pound. <laughs> Perfect. Of this pork. Maybe a little bit more. Um, and I would say get like with all these um, the amounts I gave for the recipe, um, feel free to change them at home. Like make this however you want. This just happens this just is kind of my closest rendition of what my parents made. Um, I'm sure or what I think is the closest rendition of what they used to make. Um, nothing ever tastes the same as like, you know, something your parents make it. This is just like me trying to do my best um, to make it how I remember it. So feel free, feel free to add more shrimp if you're a shrimp lover. Uh, feel free to omit the shrimp if you don't eat shrimp or don't prefer it or just don't have it in around it's kind of not the most necessary thing. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry for the mess. It's delicious. Thank you. Um, okay, so we've got our pork, carrots, onions, mung bean noodles, wood air mushrooms. Um, all that's left is to add our eggs and our cornstarch, which are going to bind this meat mixture together and season it. Uh, so we've got two eggs, two large eggs. You can just crack it right in. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of cornstarch. Um, cornstarch is a binder that I saw my parents use a lot as a kid. My mom used it a lot to kind of bind meatballs for things like um, lemongrass pork meatballs for a dish called Bone Tit Noom we used to make at home. Um, but it kind of works like a panad wood or breadcrumbs wood in like Italian meatballs. It just kind of keeps everything moist. Um, you are going to cook these egg rolls pretty cooked through, so it's going to help aid in keeping that moisture. Um, Okay, so eggs, cornstarch, then we're going to add half teaspoon of black pepper, more or less depending on what you like. Um, I like a lot of black pepper. If you are, I, I mean, I like a lot of black pepper. If you are someone who thinks it is a very strong flavor, feel free to use less, of course. Um, I've just got mine on a medium to coarse ground. fish sauce. Once again, the Three Crabs brand. Um, fish sauce is something that if you've never had before, um, maybe use sparingly at first. Uh, this recipe in general isn't, uh, mine says to taste. My family doesn't use a lot of fish sauce in a lot of our Vietnamese cooking. It's more of a way to accentuate or enhance um, the umami in a dish already. Um, so in, in my parents' like theory about using fish sauce, it's more of a flavor enhancer or way to kind of, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like salt. <clears throat> eh, it's not like salt, it's a little, it's like, it's like any sort of like anchovy product. In, for example, in Caesar salad, it's like some people like a lot of anchovy, it really brings out like a depth of flavor and umami um, a little bit of a punch. Some people like less because it's really strong. Um, we use it pretty sparingly, so I'm just going to add about a tablespoon. Um, you can add more if you love it. That's great. Um, you can also omit it if you don't like it at all. Um, I think it needs a little bit. Um, it is salty, so keep that in mind when you're salting your pork. 
Um, I've got a starting off with salt to taste is always my um, go-to, but I would say this is going to be about two tablespoons to start. Um, and then a little bit of sugar. Um, this is just white granulated sugar and you don't want a lot. It's going to be about one to two teaspoons. Um, I'm going to go with one and a half. Um, it's, there's already going to be a lot of sweetness from the carrots and the onions. All right, we've got everything in there. Um, I'm just going to start mixing this and you want to make sure everything is pretty well mixed up. here with my hands because nothing works quite as well as your hands and we're at home. <laughs> and you just kind of want to squish everything around. Once everything's mixed up, um, I'm going to get my oil heated in a couple minutes, um, and then I'll start showing you guys how to roll these guys. Okay, let's talk about rice paper and spring roll wrappers. Um, so, traditionally they're made with rice paper. Um, this is the brand my parents use, the Three Ladies brand. So the Three Crabs brand for fish sauce, Three Ladies brand for rice paper. Um, this is um, a smaller size. It comes in a bigger size also in the chain. Um, that is usually used for summer rolls, which are those fresh rolls. Um, they're uncooked normally with like noodles and like usually some shrimp and meat. They're usually dipped in peanut sauce if you've seen them around. Tons of herbs and lettuce. Um, I'm using the smaller version for the jaya because I just want to make sure that they cook through. They, um, and we also want to make sure when we use these that we're using the right amount of filling so that there are multiple layers so when you fry them they don't burst. Um, but I'll show you that later. These are the finickier ones. And then this is the spring roll wrapper. You can find it in usually the refrigerated section of the Vietnamese supermarket or their frozen section. If it's frozen, you can also store it frozen if you buy it uh, refrigerated for another time. Um, if you buy it frozen, it needs a day or two to thaw out probably in your fridge. Um, it's kind of a pain to work with if you thaw it out um, straight from the freezer room temp because you'll have a couple layers like thawed. The center will be frozen still, it'll tear. So I really recommend getting it a day or two ahead of time if you know it's gonna be frozen, letting it thaw out low and slow in your fridge. Um, all right, let's start rolling. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna show you probably, is there six there? What is it? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna show you um, how to roll out three of these, and then I'll do three of these um, then we'll roll and eat. Um, 
So when I do this by myself, I usually have a large board or you can use a clean surface like this um, countertop. Um, and I usually do about three or four times to make it faster. If you have little kids, you can put them to work and help them help you roll. Um, so soak these in room temp water on both sides. Um, that'll make them soft and malleable in about a minute. Uh, you do have kind of a small window to work with them. Um, don't soak them for too long because then they'll get too soft. Um, and you also can't soak them. So you can't work with them straight away because they're still not soft yet. Um, so I work with three at a time in cold water once again. That'll buy you a little bit of time. Some people do it in straight hot water and that makes things happen very quickly, but it doesn't buy you a lot of time. <laughs> um, okay, so for the smaller ones, I'm gonna do about an ounce to maybe an ounce and a half of filling, making sure that there's at least one piece of shrimp per. Um, and you just wanna roll it, place that neat mixture on the bottom third of the egg roll or of the rice paper wrapper. Um, so bottom third, can you see? Okay. You're going to fold the sides up. Um, and then from the bottom up, you're going to make sure you make a nice tight roll. These little guys are probably going to be two biters. Um, and then the spring roll wrapper ones are more like three or four bites. Um, and we'll put about two to two and a half ounces of filling in each of those. Um, so you want to make sure this is nice and tightly rolled, but not too tight. Um, you've got to give it a little bit of room to expand in the fryer when it starts to cook. Um, and it is really sticky, so you're going to have to work with it a little gingerly. Um, so these are our three. Um, I'm going to place them seam side down on a piece of parchment paper, like so. Um, and once you've got a bunch of these rolled out, you can go ahead and fry them. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick example of the spring roll wrappers. Um, these are more commonly found in, like these spring roll wrapped egg rolls are more commonly found in like Vietnamese food to go spots. They tend to hold up easier. Um, these are best eaten, the ones in rice paper are best eaten straight away, day of fried, um, like within hours. And then these spring roll wrapper ones hold up for quite some time, although I do prefer them fresh as well. Um, really fresh. Yes, um, so while I'm rolling these, I'm gonna turn the oil on to get heated. Um, I've got a cast iron pan. Um, you just need a heavy bottom pan. You can use a mini fry later if you want. Um, I use a mini cast, uh, sorry, I use this cast iron because it holds heat pretty well. Um, it's got a nice heavy bottom so that heat's even, it's not gonna scorch anything. Um, and just make sure when you're doing this that you put about a half to an inch of oil in, you, in here and no more than that. Oil does expand when it gets hot. So just be aware that when you start frying, it could bubble over if you have too much oil in there or if it's too hot. Um, we're gonna heat our oil to about 375 to 400 degrees. Um, so let me show you. Quick demo on spring rolls. Um, so you want to start off with the kind of diamond bottom facing you. We're going to put about two ounces to two and a half ounces of filling in this. Once again, on the bottom third. Um, I usually put two pieces of shrimp in this one. I need to make an egg wash real quick, but I'll do that first. Um, and these aren't going to self 
kind of bind like the rice paper does. So you're going to need to make a quick egg wash. I'll show you how to do that. It's just going to be one egg yolk and about two tablespoons of water whisked together. Do you want to do that? Sure. Bob's going to do it. I've got an egg right behind this one. Oh, right here. Thank you. and about two tablespoons of water. You need a fork. Um, so, just make sure there's two nice pieces of shrimp per. Um, and you wanna, once again, form this into kind of like a little log. Um, you're gonna fold up the sides, making sure that when you fold them, the folds are perpendicular to each other. You don't want anything folded like this. You just want it straight. Um, and just like before, you want to roll this nice and tight so that there are no extra air bubbles or air, but not too tight so that you stretch the skin and that it pops. Um, so once you get to this point, you can go ahead and add your egg wash. Um, just be careful to use a very small amount. Um, once again, we're looking to make sure there's not too much moisture in any of these. Uh, too much moisture creates like little bubbles in the wrapper and then it has a tendency to burst. Um, so I'm gonna place this one sealed with the egg wash, seam side down, and finish these three. Um, so once again, two folds on the side, like so. Roll up the bottom. Small amount of egg wash. And then you're placing this seam side down. All right. Um, so while the oil is heating up, I'm going to give you guys a little quick tutorial on how to make um, nook jum or nook mum, as my parents call it. It's a pretty um, notorious Vietnamese dipping sauce um, made primarily with fish sauce fresh lime juice, you definitely want to make sure you have fresh lime juice. You don't want any of that like pre-squeezed like stuff in the plastic bottle. You want fresh lime juice, um, a little bit of water, sugar, and sambal olek, which is a chili garlic paste. Um, some versions for different dishes will contain a little extra raw garlic or a little bit of ginger, um, but for this dish we're doing just pretty much a plain, simple um, nook chum. So, You're gonna need four ounces of lime juice, two ounces of water, um, two to three tablespoons of sugar, and fish sauce to taste. Once again, uh, with the fish sauce, it depends on how like salty or funky you want it. Um, I'm probably gonna go ahead and use about two to three tablespoons as well. Um, so. Lime juice, four ounces, two ounces of water, about three, two to three tablespoons of sugar. Um, this is also something I'm just trying my best to recreate, like my. <laughs> Um, the version my mom used to make, which my uncle was notorious for drinking by the end of his meal. Um, a little sambal. Uh, the sambal is also going to be to taste. Um, do we have 10 minutes? Mm. Ideally. Okay. At the end of 10 minutes. Alright, alright, alright. Okay. Um, sambal to taste and fish sauce. So, two to three tablespoons. 
Um, and this can be made in pretty large batches um, and kind of held in your fridge ahead of time for any other dishes you want to make. Um, so this is pretty much, sorry, this is pretty much set to go um, once it's all whisked together. It's right here. And then I'm going to give you guys a quick demo on, not a quick demo, just a quick kind of informational guide on some important Vietnamese herbs. So I'm lucky enough to have all these beautiful herbs on hand. Um, herbs and greens are huge in South Vietnamese cooking. Um, both of my parents are were raised in the South, so they love fresh herbs and vegetables. My husband, Bob, grew this red oak. Um, what are the other ones? Green leaf. Yeah. Green leaf and red oak um, in our own yard, so beautiful. I've got a little bit of romaine, just for crunch, um, cucumber, and these are the herbs I wanted to show you guys. So this is, in English, it's known as shiso or perilla. It's got a purple hue to it. Um, in Vietnamese, it's called Rao Tia Tho. I've got cards for you guys. Um, just so when you're at the Vietnamese market. Um, so it's got an herbaceous and pungent kind of citrusy taste to it. Um, I'm sure you've probably had it before. It's around in Japanese cuisine, shiso. Um, we've also got Rao Rum, which is awesome. It's Vietnamese coriander, and it's spelled like this. And this is, it's like so peppery. It's lovely. Peppery and citrusy. Oh. Okay, and then the last one, which I did have to call my folks about um, because I couldn't remember the name of it um, in Vietnamese, but it's Rao Kinh Yui. I think is how he told you to pronounce it, um, but it's Vietnamese oregano or marjoram. Um, it's got a le it's like it's got lemony notes to it. It's kind of a mix between shiso and mint. Um, but yeah, those are the major herbs. You want to make sure you have a ton of it, and to serve these um, serve these chaya, you want to have all these herbs on hand. Um, we're gonna build a vermicelli noodle bowl. I've cooked noodles ahead of time. You can just cook them according to the directions on the package. Um, the only thing I would say is when you're making these noodles, make sure your water is at a full boil. Like pasta, you want to have a lot of water. Um, it should be unsalted. And when you add the noodles, make sure to give it a stir so that none of the noodles stick together. You also don't want to cook these noodles al dente. You want to make sure they're cooked through. Um, because once they're cool, which is how we're serving them, um, so they get boiled, once they're boiled and cooked, you're gonna rinse them with cold water. They're gonna be served cool. Um, any noodles that are a little bit al dente will feel hard in texture, which is not very pleasant. Um, so just make sure you cook these all the way. Um, I've got my oil heating, and I have a little ooh, splash guard. Uh, this will help with any splashing or oil that might pop out into your range. I'm gonna fry these egg rolls. And to test the water out, I'm just gonna give it a little splash of water. Be careful because it could, huh? To test the oil out. Yeah. Oh, just test the oil out. Uh, that's really hot. So I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit to low or medium low because it's already at 10. And then I'm gonna drop my egg rolls in. Um, drop them in carefully. Um, and I've got a piece of paper, oh sorry, I've got a paper towel lined plate nearby for when these are ready. Um, you just want them to be, for the spring roll wrapped ones, you want them to be pretty deep golden brown. 
Uh, for the rice paper wrapped ones, you want them to be nice and crispy. So you won't really see as much color in the rice paper ones. You're looking for a crispy texture. Um, they should take about the same amount of time. Even though this, the rice paper wrapped ones are smaller, they'll need the same amount of time, if not more, to get crispy. Um, so while those are frying, I'm going to make a quick scallion oil, which is kind of what's used in a lot of Vietnamese food as well. It's literally canola oil that I'm going to bring to probably about 300 degrees. I'm going to throw some of these scallions in there. These are just sliced plain scallions. Um, and once they start to bubble, you just want them to start to bubble. I'm going to pour it out back into the bowl, let it cool. That's going to go on top of our vermicelli rice bowls. Um, so these jiao can eat, either be served in these vermicelli rice bowls um, or as little hand rolls. So I'll give you guys quick demos on that once these are done, if I have time. Just kind of want to make sure everything's cooking evenly. You can see we're starting to get a little color on the summer roll, sorry, on the spring roll wrappers. Oh my God. Um, for you, just like with anything, you're going to want to play with your heat. Um, if it seems a little too high, you're getting too much color right away, feel free to turn your heat down. Um, if you're not getting enough color, feel free to turn your heat up a little bit to medium or medium high. Um, these are pretty forgiving, so as long as you've got your heat to start at about 350, 375, or 400, um, you can kind of fiddle around with the flame, depending on how much you add to the pot. Um, so this is starting to get hot. I'm just going to add my scallions now. Um, and you literally just want them to start to bubble. Um, so you can see they're starting to bubble a little bit. I'm just going to give them about maybe a minute max. sure to keep an eye on our rolls. Um, with the rice paper, um, I found that I really like this brand because it holds up well. Some brands you'll buy will be very sticky and soft and some will be like mm, not very malleable at all. These are kind of perfect for what I like to use them for. Um, they also fry up very nicely. Um, the spring roll wrapper ones will be kind of what we're all used to, which is like egg roll style, like just crispy, crunchy, slightly sweet on the outside. Um, these rice paper ones will be crispy and slightly chewy and tacky on the teeth, um, which I personally really love. Um, so I kind of like to make both. I like to eat these day of snack on these in a couple hours um, and we're ready to go pretty much these need another minute I'm just gonna get the scallions going and then while these are frying up I'm gonna start building a rice bowl for you guys and then I'll show you guys what um, a hand roll looks like So I'm just going to make a small bowl to start. Get all the stuff out of the way. Um, so starting with the, um, the noodles as the base, you're going to want to add, you're going to want to add some of your rice noodles. in the bottom of the bowl. You want to make sure to add tons of herbs. Um, you don't need to get fancy with these and like hand chiffonade them or like chop them. They really are nice in like big hand torn chunks. It's kind of like awesome getting different pieces of the theato, the shiso, the 
um, Rao Rum and the Kin Yui in like different bites. Um, so kind of large chunks of herbs. Definitely nothing true true or fancy about this. Um, you just want to make sure you get all of your herbs in there. And I'm going to do a quick, just kind of quartering up some cucumbers. Our egg rolls are about a minute out. They're almost ready. Um, and it's usually around this time when I was helping my parents that I would be standing right by the pot of fried egg rolls with a paper napkin in my hand, waiting for the first ones to come out so I could eat them right away. Um, my mom will definitely remember this about me. Um, so I've got just an English cucumber here. Um, I'm going to quarter it. And then cut it into quarter inch slices. Um, you just want to toss that in the bowl. That'll give your bowl a ton of texture. We're almost done. Uh, a ton of texture. And then I'm going to pull these egg rolls out right now. Because they're about done. That's probably been about three to four minutes in the fryer. They can probably take up to five minutes. If you're frying them from the freezer, they'll probably take about five minutes um, altogether. But... product nice and steamy ready to go um, for the rice bowls um, I usually cut up these guys into two or three pieces add them to the bowl um, you can garnish with a little bit of your nook jam depends on how much you like I like a bunch I like it heavily dressed um, other people like light dressing I like a ton of dressing you're not some of your scallion oil Nice healthy dose of that. Take these egg rolls and cut them up. You can hear the crunch. That's what they look like inside. And then to top it off, just a little bit of ground peanuts. And you're pretty much ready to go. Um, as for the hand rolls, you can just, sorry, here you go, finished product. This is a uh, half a serving for me. I would normally eat two or three of these bowls at least with some extra egg, um, Vietnamese jaya on the side. Um, and as for the hand rolls, it's kind of the same thing. Um, you're going to want to take a couple pieces of lettuce. Um, I like the nice big pieces. They hold a lot. Um, you can throw some noodles in here, as well as some herbs. And then for these I use cucumber like spears instead. It's got herbs. Want to make sure these herbs you don't need to tear up at all. I just layer them in like that. Um, throw in an egg roll, give it a wrap. Cut a cucumber spear, kind of build a little lettuce burrito like this. Um, dip it in some nook jam. Take a bite. And take a bite. Mmm. Full hot. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Give it a try at home. Like I said, feel free to adjust seasonings according to your taste. Um, good luck and stay safe. God, is it over? Not before you said that. <laughs> Did you? Really? Yeah, it says, are you sure you want to end your stream? <laughs> Smile. <laughs> I'm hungry now. <laughs>